Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. How are you? Today we're going to be painting this cute little wooden acorn. And this is one of the new designs that we've released in our shop this past week. Um, we released five designs that are like classic fall images, but with a twist. So each one has like a different pattern on it. And so the acorn has like a damask sort of pattern. Uh, there's a pumpkin with an like a plaid or an argyle pattern. There's an apple with some like cute little leaves and things on it. So all of these designs are intended to be a, you be able to print them out. And even if you don't have like a fun stencil or something, you can use the templates to these to create a really fun pattern because even if you don't have a stencil, you can still do a damask pattern by tracing it onto your paper or onto your wood and then painting inside the lines. And so if you um, can cut your own wood, you can use our printable templates. Uh, thank you, Holly. And you can print this out at home using a um, graphite piece of graphite paper. You can trace it on your wood and then you would have this entire image to include the damask pattern on your wood. Now, if you have a laser cutting machine, you can do like I did and cut this out on like a Glowforge or um, I used the Thunder Laser Nova 24 to cut this one out. And then um, if you don't have any way of cutting it at all, you can always purchase them from us at shopdoorhangers.com. These designs come with the, with the image laser etched in the surface. So in a minute, you'll see me painting over all of this and don't panic because we're still gonna be able to see the lines through the paint, or I will. I don't know that you guys will be able to. Hey, Gina, how are you? Hello, Leanne. Marina says, I hope you had a great vacation. I did. I just got back yesterday from Destin, Florida. Now, the last couple of days, we did um, get the spinoff, like, um, winds and rain from Hurricane Ida. And so, um, we only got, like, a day and a half, actually, on the beach. But we were grateful to at least get that day and a half. And I was down there with some painting friends um, that you guys all know, like Heidi Easley and uh, Chris, Christy Hawkins and Sarah and Cindy Manley and... Casey Hope and uh, Brandy Bracey. Let's see, did I name everybody Gretchen? <laughs> like all of my, my business buddies. And so we can have fun no matter where we're at, even if we're caught in the middle of like a hurricane. <laughs> and so what we ended up doing was painting together. Cindy had brought a lot of canvases and paints and glass and resin. And I actually got to try using glass and resin on a canvas. And you know what, y'all? It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. We'd been telling Cindy that we'd been wanting to try this for quite a while, but we'd all been too intimidated. <laughs> hey, Marianne. Hey, Carrie. Have any of you guys done glass and resin? Um, I'm thinking I want to try it on some wood next time and kind of maybe do it on either a door hanger or like an ornament size or something, just something to give it a shot. Um, I may have to do start out with a small project and work up from there, but I've ordered some glass and some resin and I'm excited to try it here at home on my own and see if I can remember everything Cindy taught me. Donna says, did you do a Friday Fab Five? No, I didn't do one because we were at the beach and I didn't pre-record one, so we skipped this past Friday, but we will be doing one this week. Michelle says, is this template online? Yes, so you can get the template to this one on our website, shopdoorhangers.com. It's an acorn with a damask pattern. There's lots of other ones as well. The template is $7. Um, I see people from TikTok watching. Hello, TikTokers. Um, but we also have over a thousand different designs on our site. And if you are obsessed with getting door hanger templates, I want to remind you that today's August 31st. Tomorrow is September. So the new bundle, this is not it. This is just a sample of like how many you could get each month. But the new bundle of templates comes out tomorrow. So if you have not joined the template club yet, you can join at any time. But um, if you join today, you get a new bundle tomorrow. So you'll be billed tomorrow. You'll get all of the designs we're going to release each Friday in September early before anybody else. And you get them all for just $35 a month. So that's 20 templates for $35. And let me tell you, we've got some cute fall and Halloween and I think Thanksgiving. Giving. I don't even know. We might even have a little bit of Christmas sprinkled in there yet, but I'm not, I can't remember what all we came up with. I think we've also maybe have some breast cancer awareness stuff and some stuff for like Veterans Day. So if you're not a Template Club subscriber, definitely sign up for that. We'll put the link to that down in the description because I don't know that we have it up in the video description. 
Uh, do you have the paint colors we should use on this design? So yes, Stephanie, I'll be calling out those paint color list names as we do this, but if you want to get the list, like a printable that you can print out at home of the colors that I use on each project that I paint here live, all you have to do is text LIST to my phone number, and I've put my phone number up in the video description. It's 270-207-9091. Text LIST to that number, and you'll get a color list sent to your, um, your texting inbox on your phone each week after we paint these. Mary says, do you get the previous months also? So no, Mary, when you join Template Club, you get the, the current month and then forward. If you wish to purchase previous months, you can purchase them um, at a bit of a discount compared to like having to go buy them in the shop. Um, so you can just email customer service and ask about that. Hi, hey, Carrie, or Cindy, not Carrie. It's Cindy Carrier. <laughs> That's a new nickname for you, Cindy. Uh, Sandy loves the acorn. Okay, let's go ahead and get started painting, but you know what I forgot to grab? I forgot to get a, um, an egg carton to put my paints in. This one's probably got way more colors than we're going to use, so I'm just going to cut off about half of this. And we'll just use the other half another time. Good morning, June. How are you? Hello, hello. Kim says, I'm getting ready to cut this template out to paint myself. I want to see a picture of it. Kim, text me a picture when you're done. Jamie says, yay, I want to join Template Club. So a lot of you guys may be new Painters Clubhouse members, which by the way, if somebody from my team could share this in the Painters Clubhouse, that would be great. I, since we're not streaming on StreamYard, I know sometimes it doesn't make it in there, so I don't know if we did that yet or not. But um, if you're a Painters Clubhouse member, you get 20% off the Template Club. So don't forget about that. All right, let me have my little picture handy here. So this is what we're gonna be painting it to look like. So I'm gonna start up here at the top and do the, um, the brown. Um, and we're gonna use this dark chocolate color. So this one is dark chocolate. It's a DecoArt Americana paint. It's a, craft, a matte acrylic. And I need a fairly sar large size brush. So I'm gonna use this one right here. Um, you painted this acorn a couple weeks ago. Awesome. I'm going to wet my brush just a little bit. Wipe the excess water off. Who else has already painted this acorn? Danielle said she painted it a couple weeks ago. So you guys may be wondering, how would Danielle paint it a couple of weeks ago if it just came out in your shop? Because she's a Template Club member. She got access to it early. Uh, Holly, this one, where did this shirt come from? This one is a Framed by Sarah t-shirt. Um, it was in her t-shirt club last year. I actually just pulled it out um, from my from my drawer because I have all of my like fall and seasonal shirts in a separate drawer. And I was like, I'm in the mood to d wear a fall shirt today. So I pulled it out, um, but it's one from last year. Um, Carrie loves the template club. Tanika says, I'm gonna do the acorn as ombre. So me too, that's what we're planning on doing. We're gonna do the bottom part as an ombre pattern. So just go ahead and paint like all the way up to this line with the dark chocolate color. And then we're also going to do a little bit of shading on the top part of this acorn cap. Hello, Robin. Um, let's see. We got, do we have people watching on TikTok? We kind of do. A few. Yeah. Hey, guys. It's hard for me to remember to look at two screens, but I'm, I'm attempting to go live on TikTok every Tuesday also, so... Hey, Jamie, you like that brush? This is one of Jamie's brushes from back in July. I got the new one, but I haven't pulled it out of the package yet. <laughs> uh, why do you use the egg cartons for your paint rather than a paper plate? Because on a paper plate, the paint makes a puddle and it spreads out. This way, it keeps it in a nice, neat little puddle so that when I dip my brush, I can load more paint on my brush with one dip, whereas with, with a plate, you kind of have to scoop it. You know, you kind of have to take your brush and just scoop a little bit. Hey, Teresa, you're new, welcome. Um, so how do you get 20% off of Template Club? Tanika, since you're a Painters Clubhouse member, just log into the Painters Clubhouse membership site and click on the, um, uh, I think it's the important announcements tab, and there's a special discount code inside there. You'll just copy and paste it in when you sign up. Are you left-handed? Um, it's flipped. Here, you want me to flip it for you so that I don't look left-handed? I don't want everybody to be all confused. <laughs> oh, wait, it's this button. It always takes me a second to find it. There we go. 
Well, uh, you love using egg cartons too. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot easier because it keeps my paint all in one nice, neat little spot. And um, I feel like it keeps my paint from drying out as fast also. Does anybody else use egg cartons or what do you use to put your paint in? Let's make that our first Happy Mail uh, question. Tell me what you put your paint in. Do you use a paper plate? Do you use like a, um, some people use ice cube trays. Some people use like a paint palette. What do you put your paint in? Answer that question and we'll pick a random person to send some happy mail to. You started using egg cartons because of me. <laughs> well, Nancy, I started using egg cartons because of somebody who was watching me live one time who gave me that idea. And um, since, I, since I started doing it, I haven't looked back. It's been my favorite thing to use ever since. <laughs> I need some more of this dark chocolate color. I was running out before I get to the stem here. We'll be using a little bit also on the bottom part of our acorn when we paint the damask pattern of this color. So just get a really nice base coat down and then we're gonna dry it. Misty uses egg cartons on a paint palette. Um, somebody uses a plastic one. What got me into painting? Somebody on TikTok is asking. So years ago when my husband was deployed to Afghanistan, um, I started doing crafts at home with my friends. And a few of the crafts that we did were door hangers. And so um, after I started painting them, I kind of got hooked on it. When he came home from Afghanistan, we needed an additional income. So I started teaching paint parties in my hometown and now I'm teaching 100% online. Okay, somebody else said they use paper plates. Paper plates are okay in a pinch, but I don't like them because they do dry the paint out really quickly. So that's frustrating. Okay, I'm gonna pull out this other color. It's called Cinnamon Stick. It's a really like rusty orange sort of brown. And so we're gonna use this one to add a little bit of shading to our acorn cap. If you hear some clicking, my assistant has arrived. She's here to take pictures for the blog and everything else. So it sounds like an old, old fashioned typewriter when it clicks. Ice cube tray, Jonda. <laughs> and then you just peel the paint off when it's dry. That's handy. Um, somebody said I use everything I can get my hands on. That's funny. Just use whatever you have to, huh? All right, I'm gonna water down this brown paint just a little bit. I got a little bit of water on my brush. I'm just adding a second coat of the dark chocolate, but I'm gonna work a little quicker this time. Add a little bit more water. And as the paint is still wet, I'm gonna use the cinnamon stick color to kind of add a little bit of shading to the upper part of the acorn cap to make it kind of a lighter shade. But you gotta move quickly, because if that starts to dry, it won't blend very well when you go to add the next color. So if it feels a little dry, take a wet brush and just with water on it, just kind of smooth it across like this. And now we're gonna pick up the cinnamon stick color and we're just gonna take this and we're just gonna swipe it across the top like this, back and forth until it starts to blend really nicely. It's almost like an ombre effect on the acorn cap. Let's do a little bit up here on the, on the stem too. You can add as much or as little as you want. I kind of like the slightly streaky look of it all. I'm just gonna add a few random little streaks of it. Makes it look slightly textured. Do a little bit more over here. All right, what do you think? You like it? Let me hold it up so you guys can see a little better. You see all that texture and variety of color? It's real pretty. Let me change it up on the stem just a little. Um, have we picked a Happy Mail winner? Okay, our winner for the first Happy Mail is Miss Lana, I swear she picks these with the hard names, Lana 
Kreutzer, K-R-E-U-T-Z-E-R, -E -E if that's you. I'm so sorry if I butchered your last name, but you're our first happy mail winner. So what I want you to do is email my customer service and give them your snail mail address so we can send you something in, fun in the mail. We'll do a couple more as we keep going. So y'all hang around and as we paint in the middle and at the end, we'll do two more happy mail winners. Tanya likes the streaky textured look too. Me too. It's so fun. Uh, Kath loves the cinnamon. The cinnamon really added a little bit of a brightness to it, didn't it? It was a nice color. Thank you. I think the variation is beautiful also. <laughs> Lana says I, I did fine. <laughs> you probably had people butcher it way worse than that before, huh? All right, so now we get to start doing the ombre down here on the bottom part of our acorn, and we're gonna do that with only two colors. So we're gonna use this true red. Any kind of red will work though. I know a lot of times you guys get really hung up on the names of the colors, right? But if you have a red and a yellow at home, just use the red and yellow you have. You don't have to go out and get the exact paint colors Tamara uses to be successful with this. So this is true red. It's pretty much just a basic red color. And then this one is called marigold. I'm smiling so Shannon can take a picture. <laughs> and so the marigold is gonna go at the bottom and the true red's gonna go up at the top. So we're gonna start with the true red and I'm actually just gonna make this a little easier by just putting it on there. And we're gonna take a damp brush, same brush, and we're just gonna look how bright and vibrant that is. And we're gonna smooth this out. Now, don't worry, I'm painting right over these little etched lines on the door hanger. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some in my egg carton also because I will need that. Is it new? Yes, is what new? Uh, no, I think it's a, one I've had for a little while. I probably use the primary red more often. I think it's a little brighter than primary red. Um, but if you're using one of our etched wooden blanks, that's what we call these that have the designs laser carved on them. Um, if you're using one of those, you can um, paint right over those lines like I'm doing right now. And I can still see the lines underneath the paint. So when I go to do that damask pattern later, um, I can just do it. I can still see the paint. I can, sorry, I'm, I'm talking over myself. I can still see the lines to paint. All right, so we're just smoothing. I got a little bit too much on this corner, so I'm trying to push it back the other way. So just smooth that out. I'm trying to also make sure I fill in and get the wood covered. So this first <coughs> coat right here doesn't matter so much if it's ombre and blended real beautifully, but it does help if you get a little bit of water and kind of Thin the paint out a little if you've got too much. That's what I'm having a problem with right now is I got a little too much paint. So that I tried to shortcut things by just squeezing the paint out on the wood, but sometimes that can come back to bite you if you get too much squeezed out and then you're trying to smooth it out. So if you have that problem, just keep smearing it. If you have to, scoop some of it back into the bottle. It's okay. All right, so we've got the red down. Now let's take some of this marigold yellow. This one's almost empty. You can tell I really like this color. I used it a lot last week to paint those pumpkins. Ooh, that one kind of made a mess on me. And June says I have a heavy hand too. Me too. All right, hopefully that'll be enough. If not, we'll substitute another yellow and we'll just keep blending it and it'll be ombre. It'll be fine. <laughs> Tanya says, I love it. I paint squirt right on the surface too, but I, I'd never admit it before. <laughs> yes, I did use this marigold color with the double-sided door hanger that we did. Are all of your brushes you use damp? Um, not always, Taylor, but I find that I get a better result when my brush is a little damp. So if you have problems with that, um, you know, if you have a problems with like your, your paint not going on smoothly, a damp brush will help with that. <clears throat> it's pretty, a pretty mustard color. Yes, it is, Susie. Okay, so rinse your brush out. You're going to want a clean brush. Pick up that mustard color and start from the bottom. And we're going to just blend this on up. And we're going to try to work quickly because if we can actually, let's start right up here because... Let's see if we can get our red and yellow to blend. If we can't, then we'll just add some more red until the colors start to blend. So you do that but just by going back and forth and slightly up and down. Don't go up and down too much. Otherwise, you'll have your yellow blended way up toward the acorn cap and you don't want that. 
But the more you go back and forth, the more the color starts to meld together. And this will only work if your red is still wet enough. So if your red's not wet enough, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red like on my brush and bring it down. My assistant just said, if you wouldn't talk while you're painting, it would stay wet. <laughs> so true. <laughs> when you're talking, you slow down and then you don't get it all. So what we're gonna do, since I'm having a hard time getting that to blend, because I know this is a problem for a lot of you, is we're just gonna focus on getting the wood covered first. Let's just do that. And then we'll go up and work it, worry about blending it in a minute. Because some of you guys don't paint as fast as I do, and you're definitely gonna have trouble getting the ombre to blend, because you're painting slower. And so to kind of fix that, we'll just go ahead and paint our, paint the two colors first to make sure our wood is covered, then we'll worry about blending. It's been a while since I did ombre. I feel like I'm out of practice. Can you use a mister to dampen the paint? Oh, I suppose you could. I've never tried that, but that's, that's an interesting thought. Has anybody done that? I'm gonna get a little water on my brush because that paint is not sliding very well. It feels like it's just staying in this one little spot where I put it and it's not moving. I can still barely see those little etched lines underneath, so don't worry. We'll be able to paint right over them and see them later to add our, um, our lines. Okay, so now that I've got my yellow and my red, I'm gonna pick up some red, not a lot, just a little. And I'm gonna start bringing it in and keep a damp brush. Make sure your brush is still nice and damp. Start bringing it down into your yellow. Get a little bit more. I feel like it's not going very far. And just blend, blend, blend. You kind of have to do really long strokes to get it to blend all the way across the acorn. Maybe pick up a little bit more of that marigold right through here. Okay, and get some more of the original red. And so, so, okay, here's the problem that you begin to have. Once you've worked down this way, if you want to work back up this way, I forgot, but you have to rinse your brush out because all of that mustard that's in there it's gonna start streaking on top of your really pretty rich red color and you're gonna get frustrated. So just rinse your brush out when you decide to come back up here and get a little bit more red and you can kinda, of, you know, do some touch ups on some spots. There's a couple places where I didn't get covered real well. And while that red's on my brush, I can continue to blend it down a little. It's easier to, to blend the darker down into the lighter instead of blending upward, I feel like. That's looking real pretty though. Okay, I want my red to be a little darker up here near the acorn cap, so what I think I'm gonna do is get a little bit of this cinnamon color and see what that looks like. Let me get some more water. It's not blending very well. I'm sorry I keep moving the water on you. It's okay. So you didn't use a primer coat under your yellow this time? No, I did not. Let me get a little bit of the dark chocolate also. And with a damp brush and some wet red paint underneath, I'm just taking a little bit of this dark chocolate and kind of blending it into my red. If it looks too harsh, just do a little back and forth sweeping motion and it'll kind of erase the harshness, harshness of the color. I feel like it needs more red right through here just because it's thinner. Thank you, Robin. Amy's loving it. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. Nancy loves the way it looks too. Okay, let's put a little more red, red right through here. Hang on, I'm running out of red paint. It probably doesn't look this way on camera, but right through here, you could just tell it was thinner and the paint wasn't covered as good. So I'm just putting a little bit more of that down. Okay. Looks pretty good. I feel like, I feel pretty good about it. Let me get a little more yellow right through here. I 
I feel like with ombre, it's really hard to find a quitting spot because <laughs> you could just keep on going back and forth and working on perfection and you may never get there. So what I'm doing now is just taking a clean, wet brush and just kind of softening up any spots that don't look smooth. Do we have to tell you to stop? <laughs> yeah, Shan says, should I just tell you to stop? Yeah, you may have to. I would stop. Okay. It's hard though. It's hard. It's I want to just keep blending and blending and blending. Um, so if your ombre is not perfect, the next part where we start to add some of the damask pattern on top is really going to kind of camouflage your imperfect ombre. So um, as you know, on the design, like if you guys are just now logging on, this is a design we sell in our shop. You can purchase it two ways. The first way is the printable template. And so it'll be black and white. It'll be larger than this. This is just a little sample image I printed out. And you can tape it together. You can lay it on your wood and you can cut out your own piece of wood using a jigsaw or a scroll saw. Or if you have a laser cutting machine, you can use a Glowforge or like a, I have the Thunder Laser Nova 24. You can use that. And we have our laser cutting files in that template zip file also. So you can use those. Now the, um, the other choice is if you wanna purchase one of the wooden blanks from us, it would look like this and it would have the lines etched in the surface. So if you watched from the beginning, uh, you can kind of see them starting to appear now, now that the wood is drying, or sorry, now that the paint is drying, you can kind of see the little etched lines starting to appear. Um, and so we'll be able to just paint inside the lines to do our damask pattern. So it's gonna be fun. This is kind of an alternative to those of you who maybe aren't comfortable with stenciling because every time you stencil, you have those problems with like the stencil bleeding under, um, or maybe you just don't own stencils. And so doing it this way, you can use it at home using graphite paper to transfer the design or the pattern onto your wood. That's the way I used to do it years ago before I learned how to stencil. Or, you know, you can buy the wood blank from us and it will have the design stenciled on it already. Let me see if you guys can see. Uh, Let's see. See that? You can still see the lines. It's harder to see on camera through the red, but here it is. You can see it through the yellow and the red. Okay. You can also see the little hatch lines on the acorn cap, so we're going to add all of that later. Um, let's see. Will you turn the AC down just a little bit? Are you wearing a Christmas sweatshirt, by the way? <laughs> when is it too early? Okay, second happy mail question. When do you start wearing court Christmas shirts? <laughs> Shan showed up today with a happy holiday sweatshirt on. Come show them your sweatshirt. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> I always wear this. I've worn this so many times around you. I've never noticed that it said happy holidays till today. That is so funny. All right, let's do another happy mail. Tell us when you start wearing your, your Christmas shirts. How early is too early? Is August 31st too early? No, never. <laughs> Debbie says after Thanksgiving. Day after Christmas. Day after Christmas. <laughs> now, before Labor Day. <laughs> before Labor Day. The line I draw. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a child who wears a Halloween skeleton shirt all year round, and I have begged See? him not to wear it to school unless See? it's like Halloween, but he he just wears it anyway. Oh, Pat says after Thanksgiving. Sandy says now. So Sandy's on your on See? your team. See. <laughs> Robin says after Halloween. Well, no, it is kind of cool out this morning. I, I wear this year round though. Like, year Are you always round. cold? Because it's yes. way too hot. I'm like sweating over here and you're in a, a sweatshirt. I'm always cold. Tamara uh, Gilliatt says it's never too early. <laughs> hey, you should be lucky. I've got tacky denim denim shirts with the tacky embroidery. Oh, wow. Those don't pull out till the time is right. Oh, my. my. <laughs> you hurt my heart. Uh, tacky. That's my heart. I'm trying to choose a brush here. Yeah, Let's see. It. Let's try this like, one. Let's focus. <laughs> <laughs> Have we picked a happy mail winner yet? No. Still looking? Okay. Still You've looking. still got time. Go ahead and comment. When do you start wearing Christmas shirts? And we'll pick somebody for happy mail. While she's doing that, I did want to um, remind everybody that if you have not signed up for Template Club yet, you can get 20 templates every month for just $35, and the new bundle comes out tomorrow. So tomorrow, we will be sending our Template Club members all of the new designs that we're going to release throughout the month of September. You'll get them all early on the first day of the month, and you get them for just $35. 20 designs for $35. If you're a Painters Clubhouse member, don't forget to use your Painters Clubhouse discount code. Also, something I didn't mention earlier, um, 
Are there any of you guys interested in learning Procreate, how to draw these kinds of designs digitally before you paint them? Maybe even just like if you can't draw, maybe you just wanna know how to add the colors on a design that I've drawn inside Procreate and to like come up with your mock-up, so to speak, like your, to pick your colors ahead of time digitally before you paint them. If that's something you're interested in learning, September 27th, we're gonna have a course come out called the Procreate for Makers course. So if you wanna be reminded and put on the list of people to contact when that course is open, we put the link up in the description for you. Okay, winner of our second happy mail, I can say this name. I think she was very generous and picked an easy to name to I say. I used a comment picker. Oh, she used a, a comment picker, so it is totally random. Tamara Daniels, congratulations. We're gonna send you some happy mail. So send us an email with your address. Diane says yes to the Procreate tutorial. So it's gonna be a, a course that you guys can take and watch at your leisure. It will help those of you who are painting custom orders for people because you'll be able to kind of create like a, a mock-up before you paint the thing and send it to your customer and be like, do you approve this design? And they can say yes, and then you can get to painting. Or it will be helpful for those of you who are kind of like wanting to play with the templates that I send you and put your own spin on them. You could do that digitally without even using paint. So it's a fun way to kind of like practice your painting digitally before you actually sit down and paint. I feel like I just said that same, two different ways, the same, same sentence. <laughs> Pam says I can't handle long sleeve shirts. Jessica says I need Procreate on my Apple phone instead of my iPad. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, TikTok people. I totally forgot you guys were commenting over here. Somebody said Christmas in July. Actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to use the dark chocolate color to start painting the damask pattern on our acorn. We made Tamara drop her phone. You made me drop my phone? No, the other Tamara. Oh, the other phone camera. I'm going to water this, this dark chocolate brand, uh, color down just a smidge because it will allow the paint to kind of um, go on just a little smoother and thinner for this pattern. So it's kind of like when you're doing hand lettering. A lot of times I'll water down you know, my paint for my, my, my blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I will water down my black paint, um, before I paint lettering. So I'm watering down this brown just a little. All right. So now we can kind of look at the design and we can just trace it with our brush. And I'm just using a little round tip brush. This one's a Royal and Lang Nickel brush. It's a size six. Um, if you guys are looking for brushes, I actually got some new ones from Deco Art recently. Um, from their website, they've got a new set of brushes and the beginner set is really great. And there's a brush similar to this one in that set. So if you want to shop for brushes on their website, you can get them on there. They're, I think 30% off right now. I don't know when that sale ends, but I noticed it was on sale. Are they leaving funny comments? What did they say? One of them said they don't understand the people wearing sweatshirts and shorts at the same time. <laughs> right? I don't either. But that is totally Shan. I think she showed up like that today. That's funny. That is my uniform. My husband does that. He'll wear like a hoodie and some cargo shorts. It's a style. I guess. So I'm just painting inside the lines of this damask pattern and then I'm kind of, actually I'm kind of outlining it and then I'm filling it in with this little round tip brush. We have a watcher from Newfoundland. Ooh, wow. Um, where do you get your staples for Revolution plywood? I buy them at Lowe's usually. <coughs> Let's see, there's a pattern right up here. So you can use your round tip brush to kind of trace the edge of the design and then just fill it in in the middles. So I'm using like a really light touch to like outline them. And then I'm kind of using a little more pressure and pushing the brush down to fill in the areas to kind of make it smoother. But this dark chocolate sometimes is a little transparent. So I may have to kind of touch it up on the second go around and do like a a, a quick second coat. So it may be a little time consuming to do that. Stenciling is definitely way faster. So if you can ever learn how to do stencils, it's faster than this, but this is an alternative. <laughs> C 
college kids do that all the time, Kath says. I agree with that for sure. Kathy says, I drive with my seat heater on <laughs> and my AC on high. So you like your butt warm, but you like your face cool. <laughs> hey, Janine. Thank you. Oh, that's so funny. What about TikTok? Somebody said, Procreate class would be great. What tech stuff do you need for Procreate? You would need an iPad. I think any kind of iPad works. Um, you would need an Apple Pencil or some sort of other sort of like tablet pencil, but honestly, the Apple Pencil can't be beat. It's not like I've heard that other people, I've never used anything but the Apple Pencil, but I've heard some people that use something different have said that the Apple Pencil is way better. So I feel like it's a good investment. And then from there, you would just download the Procreate app. It's uh, $9.99 in the App Store. It's not a recurring payment, it's just a one-time $10, and they run updates on that app all the time, so they're always adding new features. So I feel like for $10, it's a really great deal. I'm honestly shocked they have not gone up on the price of it for what you get. Could you use Posca pens for that? Oh yeah, you definitely could. I actually thought about that a few minutes into it. I'm like, maybe I should have just used a Posca pen, but I don't know that I have a brown Posca pen. I'm not even sure. Oh, Shan says I do. Yes, you could put a monogram on it. That would be cute. I don't know. Oh, there they are. So the etching on this design um, kind of continues off of the edge of the wood, but it kind of stops before it gets to the edge. So I'm just intentionally going ahead and continuing it up all the way to the edge of the wood because the etching kind of stops right in here. And I'm just going ahead and like pulling it on off the edge because I think it looks better that way. Yeah, so they do make brown Posca pens. I totally could have used this. That probably would have been a little easier. But I know not everybody has Posca pens, so maybe I'm just showing you that it's totally doable with a paintbrush also. It's really pretty, though. <laughs> Daniel says, I put welcome to the nut house for my parents. <laughs> that is funny. What did they think of it? Did they like it? I'm sure if, if uh, you've got that sense of humor, you probably got it from them, so I'm sure they did. Um, Tara is having a hard time getting the size of lettering right. Okay. Don't you have a... So, um, one of the things I've done before is import a photo. Like when you're done painting your door hanger, before you put your lettering on, one of the things you could do is take a photo of it kind of from above and upload that photo into a program called Canva. Um, it's a free program and you can upload your photo. We actually have a lesson on this inside Painters Clubhouse. So if you're a Clubhouse member, go watch the lesson in there. But um, upload it into Canva and um, you can overlay text on the photo. So then you could kind of like type out what you want your lettering to look like and you can kind of size it appropriately and you can use the little rulers and guides inside Canva to kind of determine how big your lettering should be on your door hanger. And you could even print it out and use it as a template. <clears throat> now, if you are hand lettering like from scratch and you don't want to use a font or something like that, um, another method would be to use like chalk or something like that and write your lettering out ahead of time. And that way, if it um, if the if the lettering is too big, then you can quickly erase it with a baby wipe and rewrite it with the chalk um, until you get it right. So the chalk, chalk, I feel like is easier to deal with than writing it out in pencil because pencil is harder to erase if you get it wrong. All right, I'm having trouble. Let me, let me, let me turn it. I feel like I, my brush was not wanting to go that direction from that angle, so it's easier just to rotate your door hanger. Just do it. This is turning out really pretty. It's so classy looking. Is there a trick to get your lettering level on your hanger? Hmm. 
maybe draw a chalk line. Like you could take, like find the, the, the middle point, right? Take your ruler, lay it across that middle point and then draw a line with your chalk. That way you've got a line to write on top of. If somebody else has some more tips, I would love to hear what you guys do to fix this problem or to, you know, fix lettering if you have an issue. <laughs> Tanya says, yes, it's very classy. Robin says, elegant. You know, I paint all kinds of things on here all the time that are like so whimsical. So it's fun to paint something that's not necessarily whimsical, but is more classy looking. You can use a laser level to make the wording straight. That's a great tip. Somebody from Pro, uh, from TikTok said that. I almost said Procreate because somebody had said something about Procreate on TikTok. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Somebody else said they use a Lazy Susan. Um, I've heard that. Lots of people do that. I don't know that I would like having something sitting under my wood as I'm painting it, but... I don't know, I kind of like the fact that like it's flat on the table, so that might be an issue for me, but I've never tried it. I'm just continuing these lines up and off the edge of the door hanger because some of them are kind of, um, they kind of disappear toward the edge there. Just imagine what they would look like and kind of make your own line. This pattern I think is called like a damask <coughs> pattern. So if you have like a damask stencil, you could totally use something like that if you didn't want to sit here and paint inside each line. Where do you get the cutouts? They are on our site at shopdoorhangers.com. We have just released last Friday five new fall designs that all have some sort of pattern on them. And so you can kind of paint them and add this fun little pattern to the design. And it's actually laser etched in the wood so that you don't have to use a stencil if you don't have one. Let's see. I'm trying to imagine where that line's going to go off the edge. I think it would probably do like that almost picked up the wrong paint color. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, there we go. Do any of you guys live down in Louisiana? Did you have any hurricane damage or any problems? We had lots of wind and rain while I was in Destin, but we didn't like have any, any like dangerous weather. I mean, it was dangerous if you got in the ocean, obviously. They actually had a, uh, a double red flag out to keep people from getting in the water because it was so crazy, the, the waves were. So this one is a 20 inch size and I put it on my Thunder Nova 24. It's a laser machine. Um, you can get them in four different sizes in our shop, 20, 12, eight, and six. So the eight and six sizes would be great as like an ornament and a, a door hanger attachment or um, like you could make, uh, what am I trying to say? Like a banner, like a little a uh, little banner, like a fall banner out of them. This, especially the six inch size would be great for that. The 12 inch size are, work great as wreath attachments or as porch sign attachments.
Connie says, I need info on Painters Clubhouse. I want to join. Is it now closed? Yes, technically it's now closed because we opened it last week. So if you're interested in learning more about it, you can go to paintersclubhouse.com. Um, we do plan to open it again in the spring. Oh, there's one little spot that I missed. There's this little bitty, almost looks like a Pac-Man shape. <laughs> but I think it's more like just a little cutesy leaf. Okay, I think I got them all. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and quickly just kind of fill in the middles a second time. It's a little faster the second time because I don't have to go up along the edges perfectly. I can just kind of fill in the middles to make sure it's covering well. So the second coat is way faster than the first. Let me show you what it looks like, difference between first and second coat. So there's first coat, see how it's kind of streaky? And then over here on the edge, I've begun to do a second coat. So it's just a little bit more solid looking. Smaller sizes for gift tags. Oh, that's a fun idea, Diana. She said she uses them as gift tags. What do you guys do with the smaller sizes? I would like, that's a fun question. So our templates come with the different sizes in them. The new templates do. So a few months ago, we started doing the templates a little different. And the, new, the newer ones have four sizes of PDF in them. So if you're printing them out yourself, and cutting, cutting them out um, using a jigsaw or scroll saw, those printables in the different sizes are really handy because you can cut out the size that you need for your project. Um, beforehand, some of the older designs, if you wanted a different size, you would have to figure out how to resize it yourself. So that makes it a little easier. Are any of you planning to um, set up a booth for a craft fair this fall? I feel like this would be a good design to sell in a craft booth. You know, it would be a good alternative to some of the whimsical designs that, that we released. You know, this one's a little bit more elegant, a little more classy. It might appeal to a different type of customer. Vicki says ornaments or banners. Um, this would be great on a wreath with some beautiful ribbon from Deco Exchange. I agree, Robin, it totally would. Yes, this is an etched piece, Karen. It's got the design etched in the surface, so we're just painting the design in. After cutting, do you have to prep the wood? So, um, uh, Elizabeth, some people prefer to prime the wood. I almost never do, to be honest. Um, the only time I kind of prime it is if I'm using a lot of really light colors, like oranges, yellows, pinks, things like that, especially summertime pieces. For example, if I were gonna paint a beach ball, I would paint the beach ball white first and then add the, the color sections of the beach ball. So that's kind of an example of how I would prime something. But something like this, I just paint started painting the colors directly on the bare wood. Um, so after you cut it out, you do need to sand the edges, if, especially if you're using a tool like a jigsaw or a scroll saw, the edges are going to be a little bit rough. So just sand on those a little bit to smooth them out. Um, but you shouldn't have to do anything else. The, the thing you could do is after you've got your graphite paper, um, traced and you've got your design on your wood, some people like to take a Sharpie and trace the image with a Sharpie. That way um, they know for sure that no matter how many, you know, not no matter how many, but if they add lots of layers of paint, most likely the Sharpie will show through that paint better than a graphite paper would. So if you've had problems with your graphite paper, um, your graphite lines not showing through the paint, try tracing them with a Sharpie. It will make that a little easier. I am painting on an etched piece. This is one of the ones in our shop. And so um, all these lines were laser etched and after I painted over them, I could still see the lines through the paint and now I'm just filling them in and I'm actually going through and doing a quick second coat on them. And I feel like the design doesn't have to be 
per, super crisp and perfect to be cute. Like I've been a little bit messy on this one because I'm trying to do it quickly and it still looks great. I'll show you what I mean up close here in a little bit so you guys can kind of see. But it's still, it, I almost like the texture that you get by brushing on this, the design. Whereas if we had stenciled this, you wouldn't necessarily have that texture of the brush strokes. And a lot of times people think that's a bad thing, having brush stroke texture, but I think it kind of makes it look a little bit more artistic. So I feel like it's a good thing in some cases. <laughs> Kelly says, I want that one. Kelly's my neighbor. You're going to come steal this one next, aren't you? <laughs> Janine says she just bought this one on the website. Wonderful. Did anybody else buy this design this past weekend? We release new designs every Friday. Um, and of course, if you're a template club member, you get access to the templates early. If you, um, oh, thank you. Shan noticed a spot that I missed. So if you aren't a template club subscriber, definitely sign up before midnight tonight so that you can get the designs tomorrow. Where did you point at? Right here? Yeah. Thank you. It all starts to look the same after a minute after I'm staring at it. <laughs> Okay, let me hold this up so you guys can see. Now the damask is covered better. But do you see how when I when I wiggle it around in the light, you can see the texture of the brush strokes and stuff? So it's not perfect. Um, there's definitely some little bitty flaws and things like that. But I feel like overall, that's not what people are going to focus on. Us as painters, we're super critical of our own artwork. And so we're going to, you know, notice all those little things. But for the person walking up to your front door, they're just going to see this gorgeous like fall creation. They're not going to notice all those itty bitty little imperfections. Okay, I'm going to draw this and then we're going to add our finishing touches because there's there are a few little details that we still need to add and the details are usually what make things pop. So if you feel like your door hangers are a little bit flat or they just feel like they're missing something, it's probably those finishing details like the outlining and the highlighting that are really going to make things just a wow factor. So we're gonna get this real nice and dry so that we can add those. And we're gonna do one more happy mail. <clears throat> so let's see, my question for happy mail would be, why do you wanna learn Procreate? Like some of you guys, uh, if you don't wanna learn Procreate, that's okay. So if you don't wanna learn Procreate, the, the other question might be, um, what colors would you have used instead of red and yellow? That can be your question. So if you're interested in learning Procreate, why are you interested in learning? If you're not interested in learning Procreate, what colors would you have used besides red and yellow? Okay, so that's looking pretty good. All right, our next details that we need to do are just some little black and white lines. And I'm just going to do these with a Posca pen because it's going to be quick and simple that way, but you can also use a small liner brush or like a round tip brush to do these if you want. So this is the five millimeter Posca pen, not pasta like spaghetti, Posca, P-O-S-C-A. This is the five millimeter size, and I'm just going to use it to do some little detail lines along the outside edge. So we're just going to start up here, and I'm just going to keep my hand flat on the wood, and I'm just pulling that paint pen down and around toward myself. So it creates a nice smooth line. And then we're gonna rotate the piece. And we're just gonna continue that line on up and around. And it's not all the way on the edge. It's set in just a little bit from the edge. Let's see, let's do one kind of across here to separate the colors. And then we'll do some up here. Let's see. And I'm just following the etched lines, so I don't have to worry about getting these straight or anything. I can just paint right on top of those lines. And then we'll go around the edge of this one also. He says she wants to do it to see different ways to, that would look best. That's a great reason. Yes. Somebody said they would have used orange and green. That would have been pretty. Um, 
<laughs> Anne says it's intimidating. It is, but the, the course is going to walk you through it as if you have know nothing about it. So we will definitely help you kind of eliminate that fear a little bit. Thank you, Laura. She says those colors are perfect. Do you rest your hand on the wood? So if I were in the middle of the design, yes, I would be resting my hand on the wood. But since I'm going around the outside edge, my hand is on the table. And I'm instead of wiggling my wrist, I'm pulling my entire arm back. That gives me some stability. <laughs> you love your pasta pins. That's so funny. All right. Um, ooh, turquoise and yellow would have been pretty, Gwen. So this is the white one. It's the same size. It's also five millimeter. And I'm just going to use it to kind of add a little wiggly design up here, down through here. And this is kind of like the way the light bounces off the acorn. So don't be scared of doing this part. Just add a couple of little whimsical lines and things like that that can really make your design pop. I think that's probably good. I don't want to add too much because I want, I want the focus to be this right here. But these other little things are just to kind of take it up a notch. So notice how it suddenly made everything just kind of brings it up a notch, but it doesn't look so flat. All right, what do you guys think? So this would be a great one to add a saying to. Um, somebody, somebody said that they put welcome to the nut house on it. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, you could also add a monogram. You could put the Bennett's or whatever your name is on here. All right, we have our last happy mail winner. Callie Ann Buxton. Callie Ann, if you will email us your mailing address, we will send you um, some happy mail. Would you add a monogram or words or just hang it as this? So Sandy, I'll probably just hang this one up as it is because I don't get too attached to my door hangers. I'll hang them up for a little while and then I'll gift them to somebody. So instead of personalizing this one for myself, I'll probably just hang it up as is with a pretty bow or something like that on it. Um, but if this is a gift for somebody, I think it would be lovely with a monogram or their name on it. And I would probably do that in a white or like an off-white, like maybe uh, a buttermilk a buttermilk white or something like that. Thank you, Becky. Um, let's see, any other questions? How do you know where to put them if we weren't following an image? Hmm, not sure I understand your question. Oh, if you, how do you know where to put the highlights and things if you weren't following an image? So just imagine, um, like where your light source would be. So I tried to imagine my light source is right here. And so there would be a little bit of light bouncing off here and here and maybe over here on the edge. But other than that, I mean, just anywhere that looks flat, you could punch it up a little bit with a little bit of a highlight. Thank you, Melissa. All right, you guys, if you want to be notified next time I go live, all you have to do is text me, 270 207-9091. You can also get the paint color list and everything sent to you by texting LIST to that phone number. If you can't remember the phone number, I can't hardly either. It's up in the video description. You can just copy it um, after the live is over. The link to the Procreate course that we're going to be list, uh, sent starting September 27th is up there also. There's also a link for where to go buy these awesome DecoArt Americana paint colors. And by the way, if you've never shopped on the DecoArt website, you can use the code SOUTHERN, all capital letters, SOUTHERN20 to save 20% on their site. That's only a one-time use code, so stock up on all the paints you can get in one, one go, and you'll save 20%. Um, let's see, what else is up there? I think that's all, all that I think. Oh, and the link to go get this, this design in our shop, whether you're buying the template or the wood, is up there also. Did you get the Procreate course? Yes, the Procreate course is on there. Um... I don't know. We may have to add Template Club also. If you haven't signed up for Template Club, because it releases tomorrow, you'll get 20 designs for just $35. And they're all going to be like fun fall, Thanksgiving, um, what did I say? Breast cancer awareness, veterans designs, things like that. So you'll get all the designs we're going to release live. Or not, sorry, not live. I saw the word live in the comments. And my brain said it. Um, <laughs> all the designs we're going to release in the upcoming month for one low cost. Uh, Deco Art website is awesome. I agree. I agree. All right. You guys have a great afternoon. I'll see you Friday for Friday Fab Five. So come join me at 930 a.m. on Friday Central Time. Bye, y'all.